20 of Descent into the Wormhole, where we discuss everything from ancient civilization to modern day social issues and everything in between. I am Les. And I'm Stevie J. And today, this is part three of our JFK assassination coverage. And in part one, we talked about all of the things that led up to and all of the parties involved who may have had a vested interest in seeing JFK disappear. Part two, we covered a lot of the bullet ballistics and what was the official story about how the shots were fired, where they were fired from, and who fired them. But we'll get into part three now, which is what our theories are around who did it really and why. So, oh, I'm keen for this one. How are yes. you? I am fantastic. How are you? So good. So good. Good. We're getting there. We're getting close to the end, but there's so much, there's so much more because we just, we've, like it, we've only just come to the point of impact for JFK. Really? Yeah, that's right. And so we've mm -hmm. got like, there's so much to talk about and uh, we'll get into more of it in this one. But um, you know, like you said, in, I think uh, part one of this series, we, we could really talk about this for an entire year and uh, still probably yeah. not cover everything. So. No, exactly. It's, it's so intricate and so information based. And every time you turn around there, there's something new. Yeah. At the end and in the in the description box of this video and all of them, actually, I'm going to link in um, a place where you can find a lot of the um, declassified information. Yes. So if you do want to take a look at it yourself, uh, there's millions and millions and millions of documents mm -hmm. you have at it. It's a fantastic site. So where we left off was that Oswald was um, funny enough, he was arrested pretty quickly. He was arrested after 45 minutes at the movie theater. 45 minutes after shooting the president, he went and he shot apparently another, uh, a, a, an officer, and then took himself off to the movies. Because that makes sense. Of course. And um, so he kept saying he was a patsy. And as you said in, in the closing statements of our last episode, that he was going to tell his entire history with the FBI, with the CIA, with everything. And so that can't happen. Nope. It can't happen at all because he knows everything. So when he was being brought underground, when, he, when the police were supposed to be protecting him, but didn't, bringing him down, and Jack Ruby rocks up, everybody said that Oswald look at, looked at Jack Ruby like he knew him. Mm -hmm. Like there was a familiarity in the way the men looked at each other. Yep. And he just rocked up and shot him. Yep. And again, the question we always ask, why? Yeah. Why? Now I guess. Because he acted alone too, apparently. Of course. Oh, that the official story. Well, people who watch us know what we feel like about official stories. But yes, um, yeah. <laughs> Jack Ruby supposedly just rocked up randomly and decided to shoot him. Now, I've got two things with this. One is, I get it. People were angry. People were upset. People were very, very, you know, emotional at the time because the president had just been shot and a lot of people loved JFK. I can mm -hmm. see why. He wanted to do a whole lot of things that I actually agree with, you know, not going mm -hmm. to war, dismantling CIA, you know, lots and lots of things that he was planning to do. Yeah. going after the mobs so the, the 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 reason i ask this though is why did jack ruby want to do that a known right mobster why did jack ruby want to do that so then it goes well then i then i sort of go well what's the benefit to to him who benefits from harvey oswald being shot the harvey oswald being shot and killed right so we've got the cia benefit because mm -hmm. he's not going to expose them. The FBI benefit, right. he's not going to expose mm -hmm. them. The mob benefits because they've got their dead president now. They, yeah. They're going to have all the things that they wanted to have. And right. now Lee Harvey Oswald can say none of those things. Right. So the federal, And the Federal Reserve gets to keep the their money. And the Federal Reserve gets to keep their money. And the Secret Service, <laughs> the Secret Service don't have to answer as many questions. So, well, that's just it, yes. So, you know, what I would say to people, it's very easy to just go, yeah, look, everyone was angry with Lee Harvey Oswald and that's why Jack Ruby went in there and killed him because someone was going to mm -hmm. do it. You know, somebody, everybody wanted Oswald dead, so someone was going right. to do it. But we've got to ask why. Why Jack Ruby and why did he want Oswald dead? And it's interesting yeah. that they knew each other. 
Oh, Sam yes. and Lee knew each other. Yeah, and apparently they did. They did know each other through um, mob connections. Mm-hmm. Like just, just I, it was either Giancani or Tra- or it was it was one of those guys. It was one of the they they were they were connected by the mob. I do believe. Yeah, I do believe. So, or they were connected by Alan Dulles, the the former CIA dude that Kennedy fired for the yeah. Bay of Pigs fiasco. Anyway. They were connected. So funny enough, and then we'll, after this, we'll get into what happened at the hospital mm-hmm. when um, in, at Parkland when they brought the president in yeah. because that is a whole bunch of other um, nonsense and craziness that just doesn't add up. Yeah. So this author, Dorothy Callaghan, she interviewed Jack Ruby years and years later. Mm-hmm. And she said, with the information she received, she, this was going to blow the lid off of everything that anybody knew about, the, about JFK, about the FBI, about the CIA. And she said, that's it. Like, I have it all. And it is nothing like anyone can even fathom. Right. Does she not rock up dead mysteriously with a, an overdose? That she was never addicted uh, to drugs? Of course. They probably never had drugs in her life. Never had drugs probably in not. her life. Nope. Far out. Probably not. Yep. yep. Well, again, no coincidences here. And well, so Jack Ruby obviously confessed everything to her, told her everything that happened yeah. because he was probably, yeah. you know, not far from uh, the end himself um, or had some well, kind apparently- of. He had cancer. Apparently, when all this was going uh, on, he had cancer. So right. he was the perfect patsy because he didn't have much going on and he didn't have much longer to go. Mm-hmm. So he he was the perfect final finale patsy. Yeah. So when you when you stack up all of these um, coincidences, you know, like uh, Dorothy's mysterious death, mm-hmm. suspicious death, I would say, mm-hmm. you stack that up, Lee Harvey Oswald. Is no shooter. He's found within forty-five minutes. Jack Ruby knew him, like mm-hmm. had a motivation to to kill him. Why was he allowed so close to him? You know, like you mm-hmm. just keep stacking up the coincidences. Add yep. in a Secret Service not doing their job on the day mm-hmm. and actively getting away from the president instead of protecting him. Stack yep. all those coincidences up, and what you have is a plan. That's what you arrive yes. at is a plan that was executed. Yeah. The question, of course, that has remained for so so many years is. Who executed the plan? Well, let's start at the hospital and work our way to the Warren Commission. Okay. So, what happened when they got to the hospital? So many things. And and, <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> and that's it. Thanks for joining us this week. Um <laughs> Well, a lot of things happened and a lot of things didn't happen as well. Important Mm -hmm. things. So Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to to note that, okay, so after after the shots were fired, after Kennedy was killed, the the motorcade made its way to the local hospital. And the Secret Service agent in the back, who I mentioned in a previous episode, George Hickey, was holding Mm -hmm. an assault rifle, an AR-15, was witnessed by multiple people, and we talked about witnesses too, multiple people Mm -hmm. saw him holding the AR-15. All right. So they went to the hospital. 11. 11, that's right. 11, and seven of them were Secret Service. Yep. They also smelled gunpowder at ground level. How could you smell gunpowder if it was from up in the repository building? So at the hospital, one thing that was really, really uh, strange to me, and obviously to the hospital staff at the time, was... The medical examiner, there's a law in Texas that says that if there's a homicide, then the body and autopsy needs to be performed in that state immediately. Mm-hmm. And the Secret Service basically threatened at gunpoint the medical examiner saying, if you don't let us leave with the body and take it to uh, another hospital, the president's hospital, then We'll basically just roll over you. We're gonna we're gonna yeah. take you out if you don't let us leave. 
And the medical examiner was really adamant that they couldn't leave without the autopsy being done, but the Secret Service would not allow it at all, yeah. including including the president's doctor, personal physician yeah. as well. Yeah. So He wouldn't allow it to happen. Why not? Wouldn't you want to know straight away what yeah. happened? And wouldn't all the ha- evidence is there. It's fresh. It's... It's still got all, you know, it's got all the, all the, it's got everything you need right there. Yep. Why? And the chain of evidence Why? is so important. Ask any police officer, ask any person doing yeah. an investigation. The chain of evidence is so important because things mm. have to be tagged and categorized and signed for and all yeah. of those things to make sure nothing is corrupted or the chain's not broken. Yeah. Very, very odd. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was, it was. Very strange. Now let's not forget that George Hickey went into the hospital to 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 protect Lyndon Johnson uh-huh. to make sure that he was safe inside, you know, wherever he was, and then left again with his rifle. Did he need to take that rifle with him? No, he didn't. Why was it on his person? Mm-hmm. To make sure no one else grabbed it. Yep. To make sure no one else could touch it could examine it, could anything. And another good question that uh, you lead into there is, what happened to that rifle? Yeah. And was it ever tested? Was it ever, were there ever any questions asked about it? Nope. No, because it disappeared. Right. And the Secret Service denied it was ever fired. Yeah. Or ever used or, yep. Yeah. They didn't deny that it was there. They, They didn't deny that it was there, but they denied that it was ever fired. Yeah. And they actually, I think they changed, I'd have to go back and check. I'm so sorry. I'd have to go oh. back and check. But I think they may have um, changed the gun. They, they may have said it wasn't the AR-15, it was something else. Well, I think what changed was what they did when the, uh, and we're going to get into the Warren Commission, but the Warren Commission was the investigation into the assassination, right? And it was because it yeah. was Chief Justice Warren. He was the judge. Now, the investigation was very flawed, and we'll get into that, but the part that you're talking about there, I think, was that they interviewed the uh, the director or whoever's in charge of the Secret Service, mm-hmm. and they said to him, so Chief, Chief Justice Warren said to him, so it was standard procedure to have an AR-15 in the motorcade, and he said, yes, mm-hmm. it, it was. And then he said, so why is that now not part of the policy? They changed the policy directly after the Kennedy assassination so that AR-15s were no longer carried in the motorcades why did they do that that's the suspect question why did they change it so quickly yeah i suspect that they thought that no one would ever notice george hickey had the ar-15 and it would never get brought up and they could just change the policy later but they quickly changed it so and when you change a policy going forward, that's all people look at. People rarely go back to old policies. Yes. I know you do that. <laughs> I've witnessed you do that <laughs> in other things that we've investigated outside of this channel. Yeah. But like people just don't normally do that. So if you would look at it and say, well, the policy says that this gun is never, ever going to be in the car, in the jump car. Well, you would say, well, that's preposterous. How would he have... How would he have yeah. a rifle? Why would he have it? How would he have it? It's not part of the policy. We'd never do exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that makes sense. Okay. Hmm. So going going back to the hospital. So he had the, he he was walking through the hospital with this goddamn rifle because apparently Johnson needed protecting. So they finally they roll over this doctor to get JFK out of that they finally get him to the hospital of choice Mm -hmm. and it's a hospital of choice for a reason this is why they didn't want to do it in texas Mm -hmm. what happened in that room well the uh the medical examiner started his uh examination Mm -hmm. and the room was full of about a million people there was fbi agents there was secret service agents there was uh, photographers. There was all kinds of people in there. When really there was the sh- navy. There was navy. There was navy. Yep, there, there was navy and army. Yep, there was an army general in there as well who was yep. giving directions, very very strict directions to the um, the uh, medical one of the bosses of the medical divisions about what they had to do, and it was to do with the X rays. And so they had an X ray technician 
come in to do x-rays and he did his job and everything like that. He was also told very, very adamantly, do not talk about any of this. You are not to talk about any of this. You're not to do anything with any of this. No one's to know. But the interesting part is that that was on that day, that same x-ray technician a few days later got visited by his boss again and got given a bunch of bones and got given a bunch of metal fragments and he got told to sticky tape them to the skull and do x-rays again. So essentially fake x-rays. Yeah. And he testified to this. This guy actually, uh, this x-ray technician testified to that in later investigations to say, yeah, I got told I have to fake this, I have to do this fake x-ray and submit yep. that as the evidence. Um, but what also happened to the photographer's photos that were taken in that room? No one knows. Well, they got... It they went into the FBI's hands, right? Or Secret Service. Someone, yeah, it was the Secret Service said it, there would be, and the guy went and he took everything and he said he even took um, like an empty roll out of his pocket and took that. And he says, there's nothing on it. He took it anyways, took absolutely all the, a thousand pictures were taken uh, in that room that day. And this gentleman said, they will all be, re they'll all be available to the FBI upon request. Oh. Never to be seen again yep that was the uh the lead uh secret serviceman of the day who was in charge yeah. he went around with a bag and collected all the photos all the evidence everything the bullets all of the evidence that was collected and put it into i don't know mary poppins bag that's like empty yeah, like this obviously. bottomless and it and yeah he said you could have it back no one ever no one ever saw it again and yeah. interestingly those fbi agents that were also in the room they were reported, and, the, and I think it was the x-ray technician who said that the FBI guys in the room were taking pages and pages and pages of notes. Yeah. Also collected by the Secret Service. And the funny thing is that when it came to the Warren Commission and the investigations, the prosecutor or the investigator who was uh, the attorney basically uh, running the uh, interviews and everything with the witnesses, he spoke to the FBI agents and they never testified. No. about what they saw in the room they were left out why is that there was a lot of people left out and a lot of questions not questioned like they he would direct there i was reading something and i can it was it was in one of the the um declassified things and she went to ask a question she went to answer a question and he quickly diverted this one witness because she was she was about to say something that was going to destroy them. And he quickly, he cut her off and changed and completely asked her like, like left field question. Yeah. So he was directing how that, that investigation went. So yeah. if you know how you want something to go, you can be the puppet master for all. Yep. Because they're, uh, they're answering your questions. You're, you're just not saying they're okay. Like, tell me everything that, you know, I'm not going to interfere they're interfering and they're yep. directing the questions into how they want them answered. So it's very easy to be a, a puppet master and it's yeah. very easy for them to change because um, Connolly said this out of his own mouth. He said, I was not struck by the first bullet. I was struck by the second one. Yep. And the Warren commission did not accept my, my events. Yeah. The they didn't he, accept his own events. This is a guy who's got a bullet in him. He yeah. would, like he was there. You would say yes. witness number one. He yeah. was actually shot with one of the same bullets that shot Kennedy. Uh, so yeah. he knows. He knows. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the first shot yeah. that killed him. Yet the Warren Commission yeah. just went. You know what? Not credible. We, we don't want to. We yeah. don't want to hear that. Don't tell us. Don't yeah. tell us your your fancy. You know, made up story. We, yeah, your we, fanciful ideas. Yeah, we know. We what, know. We know what happened. We were because there. we were there too. <laughs> oh, we were there. We knew exactly. We played the damn team. We know what happened. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like it's it's all very sketchy. And mm -hmm. um, another thing about the Warren Commission is remember um, a, f a few whiles ago we talked about Alan Dulles being canned yes. because he was um, the porky. He did a, um, the porkies with, he's fucked up with um, Bay, of Pigs. Bay of Pigs. Yep. And JFK fired him. Mm-hmm. 
He was on the Warren Commission roundtable. He was part of it. That is a complete uh, conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. That that is um, why was he there? Why was he put there to make? In my own humble opinion, this is just my humble opinion to make sure it went in the direction it was supposed to go. One million percent agree. We have the same yeah. opinion. I mean, of course, that's why he was there. And Lyndon yeah. B. Johnson had a major role to play in all of this. Oh, yeah. Lyndon B. Johnson was not some innocent cat who just went, oh, no, poor president. Now I get to be president. Uh-uh. Yeah. He had a big hand, in my own humble opinion as well, in orchestrating yeah. this whole thing. Because look at what happened as soon as he was sworn in. You know, the things that he did. And, well, Alan Dulles was fired. He was gone. Yeah. But all of a sudden, magically, he's back. And he's on the very commission yeah. that's investigating the uh, murder and assassination of the guy who fired him. So, yeah. I mean, again, stack that on the uh, list of coincidences. I think not. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. So apparently, Alan Dulles said this in January of 1964. So only a few months later, because this was on November 22nd. That the evidence was too damning to the FBI and the CIA of what happened to Kennedy. So the Warren Commission lied to cover everything up, had to say it was Oswald, and they had to say that Oswald had no ties to either of them. They had to, because if it got out that Oswald was involved with the CIA and the FBI, and there are like... I've heard so many things and I've seen so many things. There is no doubt in my mind that, that is exactly what Oswald was. Absolutely. You, Absolutely. You'd you have to tell me something, you know, right. very, very, I'd, it, I'd have to see something solid. It was, it was paid. It was paid as 200 bucks a month. So. 200 bucks a month, which begs the question, why was he, remember in the first episode, he was, he was seen getting a $33 um, unemployment check. Right. He had a job. So, was it really him or was that how he picked up was his unemployment check actually his FBI check? Wow. Who knows? It could have been. Could have very been. well been because it's all government funded, right? You just yeah, say, yeah. well, this is his amount. Here yeah. you go. And that's a way to so keep he it was, secret. Yeah. Yeah. So he had a job and he was getting paid $200 a month. He didn't need unemployment. He didn't need it. Yep. And was the CIA paying him that we don't know. I, I don't know. Wow. Um, who knows? But his there's we can do a whole nother episode on Oswald just in and of itself right. because his connection to a lot of a lot of things and how he got the job at the book depository and um, the the Bell helicopters that were used there he was he was connected with that like he was supposed to go get a job there because his wife or his wife's friend was married to the, to the original Andrew Bell who invented the Bell helicopter. Right. Yeah. There's so many different things that tell you he, was, he just wasn't some dude off the street. Right. He wasn't. Yeah, he, he wasn't a James Bond. Like he, no. like he wasn't some, su <laughs> some super spy, but yeah. he definitely wasn't just like Joe Blow going about his business. No, 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 no. no. Like, no. And there's enough documents released to prove that, really. Like that, yeah. You know, he was paid and all of those things. Like, and, and all of the witnesses, again, like there's the witnesses, like there's Jack Ruby, there's mo other mob bosses. Like, there's just so yeah. much that all ties into this. And like, um, who was the other guy? Um, that the mob confession, uh, Marcello. Yes. Um, who was said to have uh, been overheard in his cell, his prison cell in 1985, saying that Oswald and Jack Ruby worked for him. So, yeah. like, because Jack Ruby was a um, was a nightclub owner, and yes. Marcello said that he worked uh, Ruby and Oswald worked for him in that bar. So yeah, he he said he secretly owned Ruby's bar. Right. Yeah. So, like, all of these connections, and they try to say, "Oh no, there's nothing there, nothing there, no connections. It's all just a big yeah. quinky dink." No, yep. it is not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is not. And. Uh... And apparently he said of killing the president, he said, yeah, I had the son of a bitch killed. I'm glad I did it. I'm sorry. I couldn't have done it myself. Yep. So. But mobs are, mob bosses are pretty uh, known to take credit where credit isn't due. Well, 
I feel like that is true, yes, in most cases. But um, also, on the flip side of that, they're known to be very secretive too mm-hmm. and, you know, get away with lots of murders and things that happen that nobody knows about, you know, like people getting put in barrels and dumped in rivers and stuff like that. Like, Yep, crushed so, in cars, yeah. <clears throat> Hoffa. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Give me squasher. And so... The, <laughs> So riddle me this, Jimmy. <laughs> I mean, I just think you got Jack Ruby saying to uh, Dorothy in the interview what what exactly happened, uh, confessing about it. Uh, you've got Marcello having a confession as well. Um, yeah. And look, you're right. There is an element there of maybe there's some um, some ego there to say, yeah, we did it, or I did it, or whatever. Um, yeah. But. It, you know, there could just be some downright honesty as well. That's also an option. We yeah, don't, we absolutely. Don't, we don't know. But I think no. what we always do here is piece everything together and follow the bouncing ball where it makes sense. So, mm-hmm. you know. If, and follow the money. And that's right. If you stack all of these things up one by one next to each other, the only thing that really makes sense to me is that, and it, again, it's my own humble opinion, is that, you know, it was a collusion between the mob, the Federal Reserve, the CIA, and the Secret Service, and Lyndon B. Johnson. He's added in there. Oh yeah, as he's well. in there. Oh yeah, he's in there. To assassinate and Kennedy. Alan Dulles and Alan Dulles for the CIA to uh, assassinate Kennedy for all of the reasons we covered in episodes one and two, because yeah. it was going to ruin their world, essentially. Yeah. That's this little perfect world that they built was going to go away and they couldn't have that because it was party time for them. Yep, exactly. They were running the world. Everybody was just making dough hand over fist, doing whatever the hell they wanted. Yep. And uh, he, daddy's coming in to say fun's over. Well, mm-hmm. daddy had to go. Yep. Such a shame. Yeah, exactly. Such a goddamn shame. It really is. It really is. Not just because, you know, JFK was a human being, but he really was, at least seemingly, and I've said this in the past, I really felt like he was one of the last presidents to actually give a shit about mm. people in general. Like, mm-hmm. he, wasn't a, he was a flawed human being as well, though. Like, you know, he, he was a womanizer and stuff like that. Yeah. That's well reported. But in terms of his job as president, I feel like he was the last one who actually gave a crap about the world. You yeah. know, he didn't want wars. He wanted peace. He wanted... He wanted everybody to get along and he didn't want to have these criminal elements and he'd listened to Eisenhower and didn't want that military industrial complex to be run by private companies and to be owning the world basically. Right. Sadly, uh, those puppet masters at the top had different ideas. Yeah. We forgot to mention that Bobby Kennedy asked for JFK's brain. Mm, Yes. Guess what went missing as well? JFK's brain. Gone. Mm Mm-hmm. Why? Well, because uh, somebody, Secret Service, um, (laughs) got the request from Bobby, Mm -hmm. and they went to the the hospital or, you know, the place where it was being kept, Mm -hmm. and the doctor said the doctor who handed it over regrets to this day that he did. Because yes. he was the, the Secret Service guy said, "Oh, Bobby Kennedy, you know the brother, family so sad, you know wants the brain." So this doctor handed over the brain to someone he thought we can't verify this thought was a Secret Service agent or somebody official on behalf mm-hmm. of Bobby Kennedy, and then the brain disappeared. Yeah, and that doctor regrets it to this day. Yeah, he said, "I wish I never. I wish I never have done it." But what do you do? Because we all know how I feel about authority. We all know how I feel about that. But when you have a CIA or an FBI or a Secret Service guy saying, you need to give this to me now, Mm -hmm. I don't know how much kicking and screaming I would actually do. Because I know eventually I'm not winning. I'm not winning this this tete-a-tete argument. It's happening. So I would fight it for a little bit, but at some point, like, I don't have all day. So 
and it's the, it's the government. Like they can make you get disappeared. Like if it's not me giving it over, it's me getting disappeared so they can have the thing anyways. Right. So at what point, like I, I feel for that doctor, I really do because that would weigh on you every single day. Yeah. Every day to say, I had the brain and the family wanted it. But here's the thing, did Bobby Kennedy really want it? I don't have any backup to say that, that Bobby actually said. Well, do, do you? No, no, like uh, that's the thing. The doctor, all the doctor said was that somebody came to him and said Bobby wanted it. Yeah. I'd never heard Bobby say that he wanted it or, heard, or seen a no. quote from him saying he wanted it. I mean, yeah. really, like, <laughs> would you really want your brother's brain? Oh, I, I, well, if he had questions. I guess, I guess maybe that's what it if was. He had maybe questions. he did. So maybe he did actually ask for it in secret. Yeah. Because that would be my reason. Yeah. Because oh, I got some questions and oh, I'm yeah. taking a look at that thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're handing that you're handing that fucker over. Yeah. But gone. Well, that's completely one thing. gone. So who has it? Well, it's gone. I think it's actually gone, like destroyed. You're destroyed. Yeah. Um, but this other thing too is that you got me thinking about there with the brain was the autopsy and the fake x-rays, right? The reason they did uh -huh. that, the reason they did the fake x-ray was because the original examination revealed I think they said it was hundreds of little tiny metal fragmentations, which is the yes. bullet as it goes in, that hollow point, hollow point bullet exploding as it goes in. Mm -hmm. That's what was reported. But they couldn't have that because that's not consistent right. with the rifle and ammunition that was used in the official story. So right. they gave the X-ray technician bigger pieces of metal and a skull and said, there you go, you need to fake that because then the X-rays would appear to be larger chunks of metal instead of the little fragments right. so yeah. another reason why that was faked and yeah. i mean it's just the whole thing is just such a shame it really is a shame but yeah. what makes it 10 times the shame is there's no honesty around it it's still clouded in secrecy and mm -hmm. no one will come forward and say what the truth is because it involves these agencies and if we look at and it involves you know mobs cia presidents uh, you know um, Lyndon B. Johnson, um, all of these different people, Federal Reserve. And if we look at 9-11, right, as, a, as a, an example, how quick were they to say, uh, you know, this is what happened, this is the people, we're going to go after them, all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but in the case of Kennedy, they weren't interested. I mean, much like 9-11, they weren't interested in the truth, right. but, at, but at least they went after, they, in public, they said, we're going to do this and we're doing that and we're blah, 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 like we're doing stuff. But in case of Kenny, it's like 45 minutes, we've got the guy. Yep, he's yep. in prison. Okay, he's been shot, done, case closed. Yeah, like, he, was, he was arrested and shot before Kennedy was even buried. Right. Because he was killed the day before Kennedy was buried. Yeah. So that's, that, it's just not plausible. With so many people, so, so many people there so many opportunities and we we couldn't even get into um the the people that were actually seen in and around and um you got joe's truck the yeah. the truck that was really suspicious there were so many other things yeah. and i highly recommend you know if you if I, you know keep it keep investigating because something is going to stick something is going to someone is going to find something but unfortunately they won't release the records and that's the thing the American people are owed these things. Yes. The American people have the right to see the entire investigation into their president's death. Yep. And nope. The, the, within the, um, a lot of the, uh, the declassified, a lot of it is just redacted. Yeah. Like completely redacted. Yeah. So you might as well just watch a black screen anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So... Let's go back to, so we don't know who the first shooter was. We, we really don't know because I don't mm. think it was, it was Oswald. I right. think it did come from that sixth yes. window that everyone automatically knew. Um, but that, that second, the, the fatal shot yep. and the documentary that, that brought up this, this theory that makes yes. perfect sense. Yes. And the direction they went at the end and how we said, <laughs> um, you're covering your ass. <laughs> yes, basically, yes. So, look, this documentary, and we, I mean, I'll, we, should, uh, we should put it in the description too, but it's, um, 
It's called The Smoking Gun, and that's the name mm-hmm. of the documentary. It is on YouTube, but people can watch it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very, very interesting. And I want to say, like you just said there, 100% agree with everything that they said. All the work he did was absolutely particular, evidence-based, amazing. Mm-hmm. Until the end when he makes a massive assumption without any evidence. Yes. Yeah. Okay, what that, what that assumption is is this. So I agree with all of his ballistics. I agree that the shot, the final shot that killed Kennedy came from uh, the Secret Service vehicle behind Kennedy from an AR-15 with a fragmentation round that would cause the damage we saw. Please. Re- no, thank you. So remember what I said, I, you know, it always looked to me like he was shot from the front. Right. But after watching the melon. Yes. After watching the melon in that, I said it was from the back. Mm-hmm. Because it did look, but it it was just the the sheer velocity of of yes. the thing that was that was going on. Yeah. Because even um, our buddy George said the same thing. He said it's for the it's like it's clearly it's from the front. Clearly. Yeah, yeah. But it, it was just the the angle in the bullet yeah. that made it look like. Right, and that type of bullet, that hollow point bullet, what it does is it yeah. has it has the same size entry wound, so a small entry wound, but because it disintegrates inside and fragments. On the exit, it's a big exit yeah. wound, and that's what everybody saw. So, um, yeah, so I agree with all of that, that that's what happened. But the part I cannot agree with whatsoever in any mm-hmm. realm of possibility is mm-hmm. at the end of that documentary, after going through all of this evidence and doing so much work, his conclusion is that the Secret Service agent shot the president by accident. He just yep. fumbled around, fumbled a bit, and accidentally shot the president. And there are so yeah. many reasons why I don't believe that. One is, okay, you have the, if you're a Secret Service agent and your job is to protect the president and you hear gunshots coming from the building behind you, you pull out your AR-15 and if you are trained, as I mentioned in, I think, part two, you're trained, your finger's outside the trigger guard while you're searching for a target, you acquire mm-hmm. said target, take aim, then put your... T- finger on the trigger, and then pull the trigger. No trained person dealing with firearms would have their finger on the trigger while they're in motion, as in moving up, down, moving around, standing up, sitting down. No way. No way in hell. The second thing for me on that is that the to accidentally shoot someone so accurately in the back of the head like that, like, why wasn't it Jackie? Why wasn't it just yeah. a random shot that hit the windshield? And you've got to remember that it's a, it's a tiny bullet, like it's six millimeters. It's very small. Mm-hmm. And the trajectory that that takes out of the barrel, tiny little move of the barrel either way, and that bullet's going miles away from its intended target. So to say that it was an accident, that he shot the president as he was falling backwards or lost his balance is ridiculous. Is that why they moved everyone out of that area so there were no if he were to miss there he wouldn't have hit a a spectator great point great call out yeah yeah because they moved everyone from like where where the gentleman was taking the video they moved everyone from that area because you can see there's no one there but that makes sense because if he's if he's yes. aiming in that direction, he's like, well, shit, if I miss, I'm going to hit somebody, so get everyone out of the way. Yep, and that's where the missed, a missed shot would have gone. Yeah, and a missed shot did because the first one missed. There was plenty of witnesses that said it looked like firecrackers that were hitting hitting yep. the ground. It was just one, but they, they thought it was firecrackers. Yep. And it was the first one missed. Well, sorry, go. But there was, there was also talk of the the bullet in the back of the head and then into his throat. They said those were two different shots and this one was a third shot. George said something that it was a triangular shoot with four different shots. So two from the back and two from the front. Right. And they think the front one missed. The first front missed. I don't know. Well, I mean, that is an unknown. Like that is an unknown because... Um, witnesses on ground level said they saw the first shot strike the pavement. Mm -hmm. So there was one that shot the the, the pavement. Now, Kennedy actually, Jackie said that Kennedy 
At that point, after the first shot that hit the ground was hit by a fragment of the bullet and said, oh, my God, I'm hit. Yes. Then the second shot came and got him through the, the, the shoulders and neck. Yeah. And then obviously the third shot. Um, so, I mean, just looking at the evidence we've seen, though, like we've got the evidence of those three shots, basically. We've got the evidence of those three shots taking place. Now, who fired from the depository? I don't think it was Oswald at all because I don't think no. he could have. I don't think he could have hit a barn tar- barnyard wall with a, right. with a rifle. Um, let alone a rickety one. Let alone a rickety old piece of shit. And so, with no sight. <laughs> so, I think somebody fired uh, at least a shot from the depository. The, the other shot that missed may have come from somewhere else. May have come from mm-hmm. somewhere else, like George said. Um, and but the third and final and kill shot, I believe, definitely came from the Secret Service vehicle from the AR-15. And yeah. And if it was an accident, here's the thing: if it was an accident, just stand up and say, it was "Oh my an god! Accident. Oh my god!" The people what, will forgive you. What have it I done? was an accident. Yeah. He, the president was being shot at, and because a lot of people said that they saw him like kind of like flailing around with this thing, mm-hmm. and uh, like the people in his car. What? Exactly. Exactly. But mm. but we've never seen George Hickey's testimony. We've never seen his. His. He uh, did say he did say that when he first heard the shots, he picked up the rifle, he cocked and loaded it. But in the Warren Commission, yes, they said that that right. thing was ready to go at all times. It was loaded. All you had to do was flip flick the safety. Yep. So That's he right. lied. He did lie. lie, mother. Yeah. So, and so there you go. Like that's, that goes in, ties into the whole thing I was saying about the trigger guard and all of that. Like yeah. they, they lied, they covered it up. And so yeah. in this guy's very, very humble opinion, some say the most humble in the world. I, Ooh, believe, I do actually. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that what happened was there was a definitely a conspiracy to assassinate him. It involved the CIA, Secret Service, FBI, all of those agencies, Lyndon B. Johnson, the mobs, and they wanted to take him out for all of those reasons we mentioned earlier. Yeah. The kill shot came from the Secret Service. I believe it was planned. I don't believe it was an accident, despite what uh, the investigator showed in that documentary. I do not believe it was yeah. an accident at all. There's far too many no. coincidences. And if you look at the actions of the Secret Service and everybody involved afterwards to cover it up, that Jay. only points more to a planned assassination by the Secret yeah. Service themselves. Yeah. One would think that the Secret Service, the CIA, and the FBI would not be so fucking obvious. Right. Surely you could do a better job. Like, yes. why not a bit of poison in the old uh, scotch at night? You know? like. Yep. Well, they said they put him to bed that night, like before they went out drinking with the hookers and blow, that they put him to bed at like like 12 or something exactly yeah put put something in his water beside his bed mm. do what you did to marilyn to him oh yes or would that have been too much of a coincidence well what they came up with in the end was far more like far more uh mysterious than anything yeah. like that i yeah. mean you know they would have been there's so many other ways they could have done it. And you would think, like you said, CIA, FBI, they would have had so many other ways to do it. But Yeah. yeah. Because this is just sloppy. Right. It's just sloppy. And no one bought it from the day one. I think, right. honestly, because we know internally in our in our souls, we know when something isn't right. Right. And the entire land of America, <laughs> 80% of them, their guts were screaming at them that this isn't right. Because right. this is someone that they cared. Like, this is their president. Like, it shattered people. Oh, absolutely. It shattered people. Well, so, absolutely. And, well, if you, if you look at... If you and the look- poor family, the poor Kennedy family. That Kennedy family, I'm sorry, but there are just too many sketchy deaths within the Kennedy oh, yeah. family. Yeah. We could do an entire two-part podcast just on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you could do a, you could do a full podcast just on Bobby himself. Yeah. So, you know, at all the things that he was doing, you would probably should, but you know, on that, where you said that, um, with the sloppiness of what they did Mm -hmm. fast forward 40 years, 
Dawn 11 was pretty sloppy. So, oh, yes, it was. Yeah, they haven't learned. They, haven't they learned. didn't learn their lesson. They haven't. They either haven't learned or they're super cocky that they can just get away with it. So Yeah, well, because they think they got away with it the first time. Just right. because, like, people are calling them out. And apparently George Hickey sued the guy that wrote the book. Like, there was a book coming out. Yeah. And he sued them, like, four years later and then sued them again when the when the um and i think that's why i think that lawsuit i think that's why they had to say it was an accident yes i think that's what it was because they changed their tune so fast yeah. it's like my head spun how fast yes they ch that that narrative changed so quickly yeah i was like no that that's something i would say when i don't want to get sued. <laughs> exactly and and not just that the massive leap from all the evidence-based investigating they've done Yes. everything based on evidence down to drilling holes in fake skulls and working out so bullet good. trajectories, matching the rifling of the barrels and everything like that. And then they just went, eh, pretty sure it was an accident. So yeah. what? what? Did, when, 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 did, when did this happen? Like, did we stop <laughs> investigating? What, what happened? Yeah, Fantastic. no, they did stop investigating, but uh, yeah, they exactly. had to stop talking. <laughs> I agree. I absolutely agree. <laughs> Well, I mean, this has been such a good and interesting uh, three-part series. I feel like yeah. we're, you know, right at the end now of, of our third part and final part. So is there anything else you wanted to add? No, I, oh, crap. The confession of Edward Howard Hunt. There was a confession, oh, right. and he was the assistant to Alan Dulles. Remember Dulles, the guy who was fired from the, from CIA. you know his pay, bay, yeah, from the CIA because of his Bay of Pigs fuck up. He was also part of Watergate. He went to jail for his participation in Watergate. He planned the burglaries of Watergate. He said that he was involved and he could name names. And apparently, this was on his de deathbed. Mm -hmm. So no one really knows. And apparently, he was his son who took. Who took the confession blah 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 but there's also that one and because he he passed away we don't know but the thing is here here's the bitch of the thing he's already been to jail for watergate he he was involved in the bay of pigs why not this too well it stands to reason. just add it to the roster it stands to reason why not he was already involved in all this dodgy shit so of course yeah. he was probably involved in this and if he said he was well yeah. why not believe yeah. him and he was the assistant to uh, Alan Dulles. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he would know exactly. So that, that theory, actually. So I want to close off with that theory, like his, his confession. I think any confession at this point, if it's tied to the CIA, the Secret Service, the FBI, the mob, the Federal Reserve, whatever it may be, anything to do with Vietnam, I think anything you can take from that, you can take it and say, there's some truth in there. Yep. Agree. It wasn't a one-man show. No nope. fucking way. And once again, the official story is complete and utter bullshit. Once yep. again. So yep. I just want to I just want to say like one one last thing from me. I just want to say, um, first of all, it's been very interesting to investigate this and thank you for all your work you did, because there was a mountain of work you did on this. But oh, no I, I just want to say as well that, you know, we get that people out there are upset still about the assassination of JFK. And I think it was oh, yeah. a, a very, very sad day for, uh, for everybody when he yeah. was assassinated. So, um, you know, I hope people have gotten something out of this and if nothing else, it's made you think a little deeper, a little more about what could have gone on. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I will continue to keep questioning as you will, I'm very sure. Yes, yes. Never stop questioning. I'm going to question everything. Always. Thank you so much for such great uh, three episodes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's been really, really interesting. And um, it's it's actually flown by. Like it, recording these episodes has been so much fun. And yeah. yeah, I mean, fun from not from the sense of the topic because it's a terrible topic, but it's a Ter terrible topic. Yeah. But, but finding out all of these things and, and all this interesting information has been, mm, it's been good. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I hope everybody else out there got something out of it. So, till next time, see you later.